We're continuing the Mount Farm World Tour, this time moving over to Mechagon. And if you're not familiar with this series, we basically go from continent to continent, running through all the various mounts that you can get from that place. The first part of this video, we'll be running through how to get to Mechagon. And if you've never done BFA content before as well, this will be useful to you. Although if you have unlocked Mechagon or you're comfortable getting there yourself, then skip ahead to the next chapter. So to get to Battle for Azeroth, you will need to head to your main city, you know, in Stormwind or Orgrimmar. There'll be the call to action board, and next to the board should be an NPC. If you speak to this NPC, it should have a quest for you, and this quest line should be the one that sends you to Battle for Azeroth. So go through that, you have some tasks to do, you might have a scenario if you've never done any of this content before. Once that is done, you should now find yourself in your main faction city for Battle for Azeroth. So for Horde, that would be Dazara Law, and for Alliance, that would be Boralus. Once you're there, continue the main campaign quest line that you've been given, and at some point you'll have a quest where you'll have to pick a zone that you want to start kind of questing in. You'll have a board, there'll be three zones for you to pick from. Once you're at this point, now we're kind of good to go, so just keep going through the main campaign until you get to this point. That quest done, you should now see a gnome or goblin representative in your base within Najatar that will give you a breadcrumb quest along the lines of Rumors of Mechagon. You'll go through that quest chain and eventually you will end up in Mechagon. For Alliance players to get back to Mechagon, you'll basically just fly there. And for Horde players over on the port of Desire Law, we'll find a ship and a goblin there that we can speak to, and they'll teleport us straight to Mechagon every time you want to get there again. The first mount we're going to talk about will be the Scrap Forge Mecha Spider, and this will take 12 days to get, although most of the quests are relatively straightforward. To get this quest line though, you will need to have unlocked Mechagon obviously, and you will need to have done a little bit of the intro quest lines in Mechagon, so just go through the main story. And Eventually, in Rust Bolt, the NPC called Recycler Kachunk should have a quest for you called Shop Project. This is day one of the quest line, and then you'll do that quest, you'll hand it in, come back tomorrow, and you'll have another quest. Now, you don't need to do this 12 days in a row. Say you've done three days, you take a seven day break, you come back to Mechagon, you'll still have quests all ready for you, and you'll continue from there. I did mention some of the quests will be a little bit more difficult than others, so I will run through those so you know what to expect before the day actually comes. So, day six will require you to get 1,000 spare parts, and you'll probably be obtaining a lot of spare parts as you play through but you might be spending them on other stuff as well because we do need a lot of spare parts for like achievements and other mounts too so do make sure you do keep a thousand aside for day six and then day eight is going to require us to get a bundle of recyclable parts this area you'll be quite familiar with you're going to need to be there quite often while you're in mechagon but on the south end of mechagon you'll find this area with a bunch of mobs killing these mobs will give you one of three different types of kind of like parts and then you'll combine them together to make a bundle and then there'll be these machines nearby that we can turn the bundle in for a once per day box. This box will give some reputation, it'll give us a chance at some of the items that we need for some of these other achievements and stuff as well. And it'll give you like spare parts and stuff. But it's also going to be the source for the item that we need for the day eight quest as well. Once you've handed in the bundle once, it'll become a repeatable so you can keep handing in bundles. But the rewards we get from it are going to be less. There's going to be kind of restrictions on what we can actually get from it. But this is going to be a great source for spare parts and energy cells too. It's also worth noting if you don't want to grind the mobs and you have a lot of gold aside, these items that we need to create the bundles are purchasable off the auction house. So you can head over there and buy a ton of them out and that will be your best way of getting kind of spare parts if you've got the gold for it. And then the last day to talk about is literally the last day. Once you're on the final day, you'll need to craft the mount itself, and that will take eight spare crates, which is 2,000 spare parts. You'll need five energy cells, which honestly shouldn't be too bad as you're playing through Mechagon, you'll probably end up with a ton of these. And you need eight chain igniter coils. These are going to come from the chests, from the rare spawns, or you can purchase them from Cork Stuttgart in Bundo's Yard, but I think that costs 35,000 gold. So you're probably just best holding off, and you'll eventually get them as you're playing through the content anyway because you're going to be in Mechagon for a while to get all of this done. The next mount for us to talk about will be the X995 Mechano Cat, and this is going to be straight up just a craft. You'll need to get the materials needed and you'll craft it. Although we will need the recipe first of all before we can craft the mount. So what you're going to do is head over to Cork Stuttgart in Bondo's Yard. You'll be able to purchase the recipe. And then from there, it's a case of getting 2,000 spare parts, five energy cells, and four chain igniter coils. So overall, not too bad. Between the two mounts that need the chain igniter coils, you should have plenty of these if you provide actively kind of killing all the rares and stuff and there will be reasons for us to do that anyway so you should end up with plenty of chain igniter coils as time goes on once you've got all the materials needed you'll head over to pascal who we should have unlocked from doing the main story quest lines and you'll just craft the mount and there you go there is another mechanic i want to touch on as well with the mechano cat is the fact that you can change its color there's going to be eight colors you can unlock and then once you get all eight of them you will unlock an additional color as well and that can be changed in bondo's yard kind of at the spray paint area and these colors are needed for one of the achievements for one of the mounts as well 
but I'll be talking about where to obtain the colors in more detail later on. Next up are some low drop chance rare spawn loot. Don't you just love low drop chance rare spawn loot? So the first one up is going to be the Junk Heap Drifter and this is going to drop from Rust Feather who we'll find kind of on the south ledge of Mechagon and this is going to have around a 0.5% drop chance so pretty low for something you can only kill once per day per character at least. So your best chance is just to fly out a bunch of characters and kill this every day and its respawn time is going to be around 30 minutes so you will be waiting a while to kill it each day as well. The next of the rare spawn mounts will be the Rusty Mechano Crawler and this is going to drop from the Rachnoid Harvester on around a 0.4% drop chance and you'll find the Arachnoid Harvester just to the left of Bondo's Yard. Now there is an alternate timeline that we can enter as well if you have the personal time displacer or Chromie is the kind of visitor of the day which we'll talk about later but if you have the item you can enter this alternate timeline and it does spawn here as well. Drops pretty much on the same drop chance but it'll probably be less contested so you may find it just alive sometimes there because not many people go there. Either way though this will have a roughly around a 30 minute respawn as well so you're going to be sat there waiting for this too. A couple of things to note about these rares as well is they have a daily lockout meaning you can only kill them once per day per character but your ults that have never unlocked Mechagon you can basically just fly them over here so you just go to a culturist you'll fly across the water you'll go to Mechagon and you'll be able to kill these rares and still have a chance of dropping the mounts. The next mount for us to talk about will be the Rust Bolt Resistor which requires us to be exalted with the Rust Bolt Resistance and also fork over 420,000 gold so it's going to be quite expensive to get this even if you do hit exalted and in terms of gaining reputation with the Rust Bolt Resistance there's going to be quite a few different methods you're going to have the main storyline which I recommend you go through fuller that's going to give you a chunk of rep you'll be able to kill each of the rare spawns once for I think 75 reputation there'll be a bunch of daily quests for you to do some will be from guest NPCs and it's random who's the guest for the day and then there'll be some kind of static Rust Bolt citizens that you can go over to and do some quests with too there'll be the recycler that I talked about earlier that you can do once a day there'll be a kind of world quest on the zone that'll be to kill rares or loot boxes or whatever that'll give you a big chunk of around 850 rep you can pick up the contract and do BFA world quests and you'll get 10 rep per world quest you do while the contract's ticking there'll be pet battle world quests that you'll get 75 rep from and each of the boss pet battles found within Mechagon will award you a one-time rep item for 75 reputation there'll be 10 rare fish which I'll have a map up now of the various areas you can fish them up on and each fish you fish up and hand in you'll get 25 reputation doing the scrap forge mecha spider every day will give you some reputation too and then finally there will be a one-time 500 reputation for creating the gramophone item which drops from steel singer Fraza, which is a rare and there'll also be the kegerator which drops from sea spit and if you craft both of those you will get a one-time rep bonus of 500. So from there it's just a case of coming to Mechagon every day doing your dailies doing your world quests etc and pumping out as much reputation as you can until you do hit exalted. The next mount to talk about will be the keys to model W and this will come from the zone achievement called Mecha Dun and this is going to take you quite a bit of time. So the first achievement for you to do is the Mechagonian threat which is just to complete the main quest line so that shouldn't be too bad. Next will be the outside influencers quest line and this one can be a bit tricky because there's going to be a bunch of different quests that you need to get done. There may be a guest that you need but they may not give you the quest that you need on that day. They do have like a set pool of quests that they can give and then there will be the League of Explorers as well that will pop up and theirs is a bit weird. So when you get the quest from them you'll kind of be on your own little adventure and depending on the mobs that you kill, the items you loot, the NPCs that you save, your quest that you get from this will vary. So in the beginning this won't matter too much but as you get the quest done you do want to start targeting the ones that you're missing in particular and I will have a link in the description below to a wowhead post that will run through all the various different kind of items and requirements you need to do to get those quests to pop up. Outside of that it's just going to be a case of coming back to Mechagon every day and doing the daily quests until you do get all of the unique quests done. Next up will be the Junkyard Apprentice and this will be to craft 250 Junkyard Tinkering items. This is kind of rough as well. You can either craft the Scrap Grenade which is going to cost 50 spare parts but you can do the emergency power packs which cost energy cells instead it's just basically what you've got a surplus of you'll dump into that and you'll eventually get your 250 tinkers done but yeah this is going to be rough it's going to take a lot of grinding or you're going to throw down a lot of gold the next achievement you need to do is available in eight colors which is what i was talking about before with your mechano cap for the bronze color you'll get this from a rare called rumble rocks for gold we need the armored vault bot and the armored vault bot's kind of tricky there's an item that kind of just it kills it instantly or what you can do instead is you'll aggro it and you'll kite it all the way to Bondo's yard and there's going to be this kind of like lightning pylon you'll kite it into that it'll explode and now you can loot it next will be the lemonade color and this is from the oxidized leech beast and that is going to be over in the recycling area that we we're in earlier and what you'll want to do is kill the mobs here or kill mr fix it if he's up he'll be a rare nearby until you get the item called the evaporator coil you'll use that on the big tower near where mr fix it can spawn and that'll turn the area into kind of like a rain 
raining area and the mobs will now be easier to kill as well. Once that's happening, there'll be these little oozes, these oxidized mobs that we can kill and you're going to kill them over and over again and eventually, hopefully, you'll get that rare spawn proc of the mob that we need. Once that is up, you kill it and you'll have a chance at your lemonade colour. The next one up is going to be orange, which drops from the Fungorian Fura, which is only active on certain days depending on who the guest NPCs are, or it can also drop from the Craze Trog. The Craze Trog is a spawn we'll find in a cave kind of on the northeast of the island. And when you go over to him, he won't actually be attackable, but instead he'll be like, I really hate like red. <laughs> and what you'll do then is head all the way over to Bondo's yard, whichever color he was angry about, you'll get yourself spray painted with that color. There'll be like pools on the ground that you can get into. And once you're that color, you'll go all the way back over to the Craze Trog. Now he sees you as that color. He's going to be like, I'm, I got a oh, red, I hate red. And he's going to try and kill you. And now you can kill him and have a chance of getting the orange, also the green, and the red as well. The red colour can also drop from chests. Finally, there will be copper, which can come from the recycling hand in that we can do once per day, or it can come from the drill rig event as well. The next achievement is going to be making the mount, which is to create the scrap forge mecha spider. So we're going to be working towards that anyway for the other mount, so that shouldn't be too difficult. The next achievement up is rest in pistons, which requires us to kill every single rare in Mechagon. I do have an older video on that, which covers all the different rares found within Mechagon. It's mostly right, there is some outdated information or stuff that I got wrong because this was during PT. PTR, but it should get you most of the way and I'll also have a link to a post from Wowhead as well which has all of the rares as well so you can pick whichever one is better for you. The next achievement up is going to be the Junkyard Architect which requires us to unlock all of the blueprints with Pascal so this is going to take quite a bit of time. The blueprints will come from like quests, they'll come from a lot of the rare spawns, they'll come from the paragon boxes when you're post exalted. So you're going to have to get to exalted and then start getting those paragon chests. They'll come from the recycling once a day, they'll also come from exalted at the vendor you'll be able to purchase some of them. So you're just going have to go through all that content and get all of the recipes this will take you some time next up is the junkyard machinist which requires you to complete 100 constructions across mechagon so these are going to be like the flame turrets that you can contribute spare parts and energy cells to it's going to be like the weapon smith things and you're just going to have to fly around and go to these put in your materials complete them and then go to the next one so this is going to take thousands of spare parts it's going to take potentially hundreds of energy cells so once again if you've got the gold i definitely would recommend just dumping some stuff into the recycling stuff and get your parts that way it's going to save you a ton of time or you can farm it out yourself it's up to you a couple of things to note about this is if you do this in a group and someone contributes and you finish it or they contribute and they finish it as long as you've contributed and you're nearby when it's finished you should still get contribution towards the achievement so if you can get a group for this it is going to save everyone's spare parts and make this a little bit more reasonable also, I definitely would recommend waiting for the flame turrets to be around. Those are going to be the more efficient one to build for getting your progression done. The next achievement is the Junkyard Melomaniac, and this is to get all of the tracks found across Mechagon. So there'll be that gramophone that we built in the base, and now you need to get the music tracks for it. These will come from various sources, such as recycling from the reclamation rig, which is kind of an event that will be up. You can also do the hard mode of this as well, which will give you an additional crate, which is additional chances of getting the items we need. But you can only do that once you've unlocked like the super collider which is from doing x amount of dailies as well with another npc who is a guest but once you do have that i definitely would look into doing the hard mode it's not very difficult now you basically just need to keep hitting all of the mobs that spawn with the super collider they'll also come from rare spawns they'll come from the data anomaly event which isn't always going to be available but when it is you want to make sure you're trying to farm that and get that done although once again pretty difficult when you're on your own now it was a lot easier when there was a bunch of people around and then they'll also drop from steel singer fraser who can drop pretty much all of them so you definitely want to be making sure you're killing that once a day as well and then the final achievement is armed for action which is to construct five of the different weapons so this will be five different dailies with the same kind of guest npc and this is how you unlock the super collider as well so you just need to keep doing the dailies with that npc every time they're around keep building the weapons once you've built all the different types you will get the achievement so that is everything you need to unlock the keys to model w but i say everything as if it's easy this is going to take you a lot of time and it's going to be a big grind as well so you know just slowly work towards it don't burn yourself out and eventually you will get that mount. The final two mounts for us to talk about will both come from the Mythic Mechagon dungeon. So you'll head inside on Mythic and the first mount up is going to be the Mechagon Peacekeeper which will drop from the fourth boss in the dungeon. So you'll kill out the first three. You'll get access to the fourth and you'll have around a 0.5% chance of getting the mount once you kill it. Next up, we'll be moving over to the aerial unit R21X. For this, you can head straight to Mechagon. You don't need to have unlocked the island before. You can just fly there from Cult Us. You'll head inside the dungeon. You need to be on mythic difficulty for the dungeon. And then from there, we can start doing the dungeon on hard mode to get the mount drop. Doing the achievement, keep DPS in and no one explodes. So you'll want to head to Mechagon Island. You'll turn your dungeon difficulty onto mythic. You'll head inside 
And the first thing we need to do is kill all of the first three bosses while the oppression unit is flying above. So just look into the air and whichever area it's flying above, you'll head to that area. You'll know you're there because you'll start throwing down these annoying little robots that will chase you down. And then what you'll do is just kill the bosses in each of these areas. The only boss you might get a little bit confused on is the one on the far left, which you need to kill these kind of giant green elementals. They'll spawn little robots from them. You need the three robots and then the boss will spawn. So once these three bosses are dead, we can head towards the fourth boss. And this is where things get a little bit tricky to solo, but it's not too advanced, don't worry. So what's going to happen is you'll start the fight and you'll kill the robot in the middle. And then once that robot's dead, you'll normally have to click on one of the pylons to activate the boss to like bring it down, basically. Unfortunately, solo, we're not fast enough to do that. So what we're going to do instead, as soon as that robot in the middle is dead, we're going to run all the way back to the start of the dungeon. And what we're going to do is outrange the one-shot mechanic that happens when the bar reaches zero. So we're going to run all the way to the beginning. You're going to stand next to the innkeeper where I'm stood now. And once you see the bar finish its little cast, then we're just going to sprint as fast as we can towards the boss again. And if you're quick enough, what the boss will do is it won't de-aggro, it won't despawn. Instead, it'll kind of run towards you and just be your best friend that's going to follow you around. Now that it's following us around, what we're going to do is finish the actual mechanic. We're going to go up to the electric pylons. You're going to dodge the robots as they kind of move around. And you're going to keep clicking on it until it reaches 100 energy. Once it's done, the boss will come down. You'll be able to DPS the boss and complete the fight. This may take you a few attempts to get correct. And once again, if you need kind of speed potions or something to help out with this, then do grab some. But it shouldn't be too difficult. With that boss dead, we can move on to the next part of the dungeon. So we're going to head upstairs. We're going to kill the next boss. You don't have to do anything special here. Once that boss is dead, we'll be thrown into the trash and you'll head towards the dog boss. And what we need to do here before you pull the boss, there'll be a trash pile, a robo waste pile on the left hand side. You'll walk over to that, you'll click it, you'll see it fly into the furnace. Once that animation is done, give it a couple of seconds and then pull the boss and kill it. It's going to die very quickly. You shouldn't need to worry about any of the additional mechanics it now has. With that done, we can continue through the dungeon. You'll head upstairs, you'll follow this kind of like gauntlet thing. You'll kill waves of mobs. You'll head through this place that'll kind of keep teleporting you back if you don't do the gauntlet correctly. And make use of the kind of mist areas, the steam, to hide yourself until one of the robots passes you and then you can kind of weave around it. You'll get to the next boss, nothing you need to know here, you can just simply kill it. Move upstairs, take the robot to the final section of the dungeon, head towards the final boss room, and now you have two choices. Choice one is you can go in there and just click the button and kill the boss as soon as possible. You'll have about 45 seconds to kill all of the phases of the boss. So if you're a geared character at level 70, you should be able to do this. Or if you're not very confident in your ability to do damage, the other option is what I show you here, is we're going to pull the boss and we're going to pull it out of the room so it resets. We're going to run into the room and we're going to kind of stand at the back where he's going to respawn. And you want to be able to put something down that's instantly going to aggro him. So if you have like a ox statue like I do, or you have like a blizzard, basically we just need to get aggro in him the second he spawns, like the split second he spawns, he's aggroed onto you. If you do that correctly, what will happen is the boss will get onto you and the button will kind of like disappear and then pop back up again. And that means now that the button is present throughout the entire fight, which it's not meant to be. So what we can do now is we can DPS the boss down, get him into phase two, get the second phase part of the boss down a little bit as well, run over, click the button, and then finish off the boss because you'll have that kind of like 45 second window now to kill the boss. So that method gives you a much bigger window to be able to kill the boss in because you can get him down to like 50%. You can click the button and now you've got 45 seconds to, to kill him, which should be very, very doable for anyone at level 70. Finish all that, make sure you don't kill the king too fast when he's broken out of his robot like I do. And now you'll be able to loot him and you'll have a chance of that mount, a quite high chance, so you should be able to get this one fairly quickly. So those are all of the mounts you can get from Mechagon. Hopefully this guide was helpful. Look out for more episodes of the Mount Farm World Tour coming very soon as we now move into Shadowlands, which is going to be a beast to conquer because there is a ton of mounts from that place with a ton of different sources, some very complex as well. So look forward to that as we move into that content too. Outside of that, look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.